Good morning from a sunny, warm, not raining, thankfully, still stress free, Peterborough. So first off, um, thanks for the comments on Kat's video. I learnt a lot of stuff on that. Some of the stuff that she was talking about was like, what? Hey. But there you go. That's the scientist in her coming out. Uh, and a shout out to Nicholas Mills, who uh, put together a nice comment regarding rainwater usage for where he lives, where there is um, there's not a plentiful supply of water. So he has to work with Mother Nature and rainwater in order to get his pond to work properly. So that was, I found that fascinating, fascinating. So things to think about. Now that we seem to be on top of the water parameters um, and everything seems to be levelling out, touch wood, although we keep an eye on it, it's time to think about where we can go next. Uh, so you might recall on an earlier video that we've inadvertently created a noisy area and a quiet area. This quiet area uh, gathers anything that's dropped in the water and it doesn't go in the skimmer. Uh, now for all those people that live in third floor flats in town centres with no friends and no ponds, yes you were right and yes we already knew about it. So what we need to do is reroute the return from the shower so it actually comes down this wall. Now I've never been a big fan of this return. This one, absolutely love, but this one, no. So if anybody's got an idea of how I can run that return to aim this way, let me know. Now it's all right saying just put a 90 degree in a pipe. I wanna avoid that like the plague. If there's any kind of water feature out there in the market that will return sideways, left or right, left or right handed, let me know. If not, I will get my polypropylene and my welder out and I'll make something. Another thing that sort of cropped up and it's quite interesting and we already knew about it again was the amount of fines that passes through the drum. So anything less than 75 micron, which is our screen size, will pass through naturally. Then I'm starting to think, how can I further reduce my maintenance? And my only maintenance really now is changing the floss in the top of the shower. So what could I put before the shower and before the floss to try and take more fines out. So let's just have a look at the area in question. I'll follow you. So this, this water barrel doesn't have to be a permanent feature. This It can move across here, it can move to the other side. So forget that for the time being. This is the space I've got to play with down there. Now it might not look a lot, but I might not need a lot. That's the incoming pipe, comes up on that flexi pipe and straight into the shower. That three inch pipe could be in the way, but then again, it probably won't be when I've finished. So you're probably thinking, what the hell is he on about? Well, as you know, myself and Kat went to visit Righty and Fiona and I got some plans off him for something. Now, when Wrighty makes stuff, he makes it for his pond, quite rightly. And kindness of his heart, he sells them the plans on for people who want to do the same. But not all ponds are the same and some aspects of his work needs adapting. I'm no different. I can't fully ut utilise his full plans because my system won't take it. Let's just have a look inside the greenhouse and I'll show you the inside of where the pipework goes. 
I'll follow you and all will be revealed shortly. So what have I got to play with? That's capped off waste pipe. I can tap into that somehow, but I'm not sure yet. But that is glued on, so I'm gonna to have to cut that off. Move my net. Pump, T-piece. This will split between the tangential return, which is not being used at the moment. And yes, I could use that to start the rotation of the the quiet part of the pond this valve is for the arched water blade this valve is for the shower and I've got a nice piece of pipe that I can cut into this is the elbow and then as we said outside this goes vertical straight into the shower are you with me so far? have you guessed it yet? I'll follow you Look what we've got on the grass. Yes. So, from the barrel, which still smells of whiskey, to this stick, is 1.6 metres. And that's the amount of space that I can put stuff in without making it look untidy. Now, I've been on other channels on YouTube and seen people create upflow filters and what they've done is gone from 8 to 4 and then add another one of these 4 to 2 or 4 to 1.5 now that's absolutely fine but that's going to encroach on my available space so what I might have to do is put a 4 inch to 2 inch reducer and then a two inch to one and a half inch reducer and sit it inside there in order to put an elbow on. So far so good. These are the fittings for the airline which will go in here and the base is pretty much the same. Now right here has a solenoid. Um, this is a 240 volt solenoid and this he uses on his system to actually dump to waste after he's finished his cleaning cycle so we have got the same on the bottom here which is a 8 to 4 reducer and again I'm short of space so I'm gonna to have to do the 4 to 2 and 2 to 1 and a half to then get an elbow so the only things on the outside of the greenhouse will be this elbow, the upflow filter, the other elbow at the top, and a little bit of pipe. The plan is, and we'll walk back into the greenhouse. Sorry for walking backwards and forwards. Seems a bit hard, but. So this will then be the bottom of the upflow filter with its direct inlet through here. Now if I tee into this pipe, put another valve on and go out to that waste, I can manually close this, open an air supply, clean the filter as it sat out there and then open a second valve to dump to waste. So in effect I will have a manual system which is, that's okay, and not an automatic system as right here has. It might become automatic in the future if I can do a bit of tinkering but we shall see. So what I've got to do is splice in to the air supply that I've already got running and splice into the pipe work that's already existing and as you can well imagine even though I've got boxes and boxes of fittings I haven't got exactly what I need <sighs> oh 
Yep, I like that. So those are the only fittings that I can use. Thankfully, I've got a valve and an elbow, which is exactly what I need. So I've just got to make a list of things that I need to pick up from the suppliers and then I can start building that. So far so good. So more spending, more experimentation, but I think this is going to be a winner. I have already ordered some Helix 13 to go inside the upflow filter. Um, I think Terry states that he's put 12 litres in but it should be 10. Yeah, I think he actually says on his plans he tried it with 12 and it was too much so I've ordered 25 anyway because I think 10 litres was 30 quid and 25 litres was 40 quid so winner winner chicken dinner all the way that one. Uh, so that's where we are with a little bit of experimentation. We shall see. And uh, yes, the five bricks are still missing. The saga continues. How are the fish? Absolutely fine. There was a lot of talk of Flukes, Lernex Pro, Fluxolve Plus. Um, our Fluxolve Plus second dose goes in on Saturday of next week. So basically another six days. So what we've actually seen in the meantime is the fish have been flicking every so often but just a couple of flicks and a couple of scratches and then that's it. None of them are clamping, none of them are off the food, they're just eating like horses. So like many of us out there I'm going to sit on my hands I'm not going to take them out, do any scrapes, stress them out, blah blah blah. Let's just wait another six days. I'll put in the second dose. Now a lot of people have said that the um, egg cycle of gill flukes and the egg cycle of body flukes are different. Temperatures will change the cycle of the flukes. But if I was to put in the fluke solve at the wrong time, and then turn around to the manufacturer and say well it doesn't work they'll just say did you wait three weeks no it didn't therefore they'll just put their hands up and say told you so what we're just going to do is follow the manufacturer's suggestion which is three weeks and then we can come back to you after the three weeks to see whether the fluke solve has been successful and whether we've seen any changes characteristics wise uh, in the fish and up to now fingers crossed the clarity of the water is incredible uh, like we said on earlier videos at the deepest point it's 1.74 and we can see every little bit of dirt and whatever down on the bottom perfectly I'm expecting it to go green one day but not today because it's a sunny day uh, so there we go so that's that's how we're doing at the moment so we've discussed the upflow filter more expense but just an experiment to see if that I can get rid of the filter floss in the shower so when this upflow filter is uh, up and running I'll take a photograph of the shower floss after a certain amount of days before the upflow then when that's fitted I'll do the certain amount of days again with it fitted and hopefully we've seen an improvement I just enjoy building stuff so thanks to Terry Wright and Fiona for prodding him and keeping him going we'll see how this works out my polypropylene discs or polypropylene material for the discs arrive tomorrow all being well and I'll just go get the reducers and try and get it up and running as quick as I can got to make some kind of frame some kind of platform so don't expect it to be done in the next week or so I've got bits and pieces to do elsewhere so I'll get back to you when I can on that anyway 
Let's have a look through the window. As the sun's out, the fish have gone down into the shady area, like every one of us should do, especially when you've got ginger hair. The little darlings are down there. And you may well see with the sunlight coming through that the clarity of the water is very good. Right, thinking caps on, returns for a shower. Might just put the tangential return on slightly. See if we can start to turn the water over. In the meantime, stay safe, look after your family. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.